tell you how we fared and I think we did a pretty thorough job. Okay. We'll let your throat rest. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <coughs>
serious, quote unquote, as Delta, you know, in the past variants, but it's still really impacting people, Mm -hmm. you know? And so just kind of like I was telling people I had to compartmentalize my thoughts Mm. because I have to protect the baby and a way of protecting the baby is managing my thoughts, you know, to just be like, okay, like day by day, Mm -hmm. minute by minute. So having Vi be a hundred percent better, I don't know how you felt. Yeah, it was good. And I felt fine still at that point. You know, you were starting to take on some symptoms. Jackson seemed to be on a similar trajectory as Vi, which was encouraging because we had a little heightened concern for him, but he wasn't like coughing or wheezing or, you know, or having a persistent anything. So he was turning a corner pretty quickly like she was. So that was encouraging for sure. And it was nice that you were still good because I was 100%. Hayimi was taking care of all of us. Yeah. And we were all wearing N95s in right. the house because the doctor just, was saying, you know, reduce your viral load. Like, clearly there's a virus in your house. Right. So, so we had, uh, like, one thing we... We're lucky that we have a home that we could each have our own space. So, and then I made sure that all the rooms had a good ventilation. So we just kind of kept the air flowing. <clears throat> and we didn't... We mostly rested and hydrated, but we also, like, I made a point to, like, especially as the kids were getting better, get outside, kind of walk around a little bit, just get, you know, kind of get the blood flowing and, you know, but take it easy, you know, take it easy, rest, hydrate. Yeah. And have airflow. So no school for both kids on Wednesday. Um, By that evening, Jackson was under 100 degrees. He ate well. He rested. I had tons of energy still. And Jackson wasn't allowed to go back to school until Tuesday. So it was the same kind of thing, like right. five days. So I think all the schools are going by the CDC. Um, and then by school does mask. So she didn't have to, like, she was just doing her normal thing, which was um, masking and, um, you know, ha- she had to wear a mask outdoors also, which she was already doing for the next five days. But Jackson... Um, Again, he was already doing that. was the only one in his class doing it. So his whole thing was couldn't come back for five days and then had to wear a mask for five days. Um, so then I had a super sore throat, started coughing, started getting stuffy, started having body aches, but I was still testing negative on Wednesday. Thursday was a tough, or Wednesday night was a tough night for me. I woke up with a super sore throat Um, had galas, but no fever, Um, you know, really hard to get comfortable while sleeping because I'm pregnant. Kaimi started to feel off and you were telling me that for pregnancy, like, so the kids both had fevers. Mm -hmm. I didn't. And Kaimi was saying that's good. Yeah. Well, fever is for a baby is probably the biggest threat of, you know, if you had a persistent fever, that's bad for when you're pregnant. And it's, you were the only one. I ended up getting a fever at, at one point for, you know, the night. But you were the only one that really didn't. It was just great. Yeah. So then Friday, I still had a super sore throat in the morning. Still no fever. Runny nose, cough. Um, sometimes the because there was just so much, like, mucus in there, I would gag when I would cough. And I was really surprised that I, I wasn't leading to, like, throwing up, you know, there were several times where I was like, oh my gosh, this is awful. I'm it, it, like, you know, when you cough like that until you gag, it's not pleasant. Um, <clears throat> and we were all isolated and I, I saw baby move for the first time <laughs> and it was such like a bittersweet moment because I'm upstairs with the door locked mm-hmm. and, um, and baby was like super active. So I actually got to take my phone out and I videotaped because you could actually see my belly moving. Mm-hmm. Um, 19 weeks pregnant at that point. And so I texted it to Kaimi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in the same house texting each other. So. You know, and they go, so they got to experience it. But Well, we wanted to save our voices besides not seeing each other, yeah. you know, and isolating. But like, even now, right now, like if I talk for too long, I start... I'm still kind of yeah, have a little irritation. Get, like, scratchy and so I'm like trying to take it easy on like talking too much. Yeah. So we were doing that during that time. That's why we were kind of texting too. It's like limiting that. 
Um, and at 5 p.m. 100 temperature. Is that you? On Friday? Must be. That you had it's a slight night. temperature. And then, got, oh yeah, right. nasal drip all night, little headache, 101.4 fever. Overnight, in the middle of the night, went up to 102. Five, I said she had a sore throat, but only in the morning. Kids running around the house like crazies. Yeah. <laughs> so we started to isolate. Day. The downtime period, that Friday, Saturday kind of period. Was... Yeah, we started to isolate and the kids were kind of on their own, yeah. <laughs> but which we're so thankful that they're old enough. They right. can like feed themselves. I mean, we were, you know, Clayney and I would come out with our masks on and, and just make sure that they didn't kill each other. But I can't imagine what that's like for people with like know, several kids under the age okay. of five or yeah. even just one baby oh, or, right. you know. Yeah, it's tough. Um, so on Saturday, oh, my baby. lips were tingly when I would lay on my back. Then the mucus would like collect in the back of my throat and it would allow me to spit it out. Mm. So it was kind of interesting that like I, you know, I'm supposed to sleep on my side because I'm pregnant and I, ha I was really propped up mm -hmm. with a bunch of pillows. But then I... Every now and then I would go on my back and it would give me relief because I could just at least get that stuff out. And my main concern was not allowing it to go into my lungs and just stay as like a head cold. And the way I described like how I was feeling at the height of my COVID was um, like when I had walking pneumonia a couple of years ago, like that's what it felt like. Mm -hmm. um, but not quite as bad yeah, like I my mean, cough wasn't quite as bad who knows how it manifests for different people but for right. us you and I not so much the kids because they got through it so quickly I think it became basically like a head cold that we were trying to not let settle into yeah our chest and it's still for me kind of like right in that zone where I'm like still not through it yeah but I'd never like became where I couldn't manage it yeah uh, same. we were very lucky uh-huh um, and I kept a cup by my bed so I could just like spit that stuff out. Um, you know, all night was basically just a bunch of uncomfortable naps because it felt like I <coughs> needed to get up every few hours and just empty that out. You know, mm -hmm. unfortunately I'm pregnant, so I have to pee anyway. So it was like, but you know, it was kind of, it was exhausting. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> still no fever, lots of coughing throat still like very tight and in the morning you know from not drinking as much mm -hmm. as I would during the day just super parched and like very difficult you know when you're when you swallow and you're like mm -hmm. you know like that's how it felt um but okay during the day like once I started to kind of move and yeah you know yeah. drink and eat regularly which i ate regularly the entire time and drank drank regularly yeah, the i never entire lost time. my appetite i wasn't like yeah. hungry but i wasn't like right. right it wasn't like oh that's disgusting i can't eat you right. know never felt nauseous i can't imagine like having covid during my first trimester yeah, when i was that. like very right. like oh i can't eat that i can't do this right. you know to have that on different. top of it mm -hmm. Um, I had some pain behind my eyes. Yeah, I had like sinus, like as if when normal, and ears too. Like oh, when definitely we drove, popping of ears. I still have it a little bit right now. Me too. Just driving <clears throat> that, uh, going up and down, it's like the ears are, you have it so, a little bit really, but bye. Um, mm -hmm. and then Saturday, you tested positive in the morning. Yeah. That night, you also had another hard sleep, 101.8 fever, some body aches. Um, at that point we had run out of all of our frozen food because <laughs> <laughs> we just weren't prepared mm. to have COVID. Um, and so we ordered drive up groceries at Target. Sunday, Kaimi said his energy was about 80%. Headache was gone. More congestion though, but not coughing like I was. Um, he slept better, but the nasal drip was keeping him up. So he took Benadryl. I slept through the night. Um, but, you know, clearing the throat and nasal passages all morning. On Monday, I had a scratchy throat. Um, I had two pretty intense coughing fits, like the gagging ones. Mm. Um, and I started a salt gargle, um, honey and lemon. 
but I was feeling like 75%. I think I was doing the honey and lemon actually pretty consistently. Yeah, you were doing that regularly. Through, mm -hmm. um, but the salt gargoyle I didn't start till then because the, the throat was just like so tight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Stuff I should have done, um, had more soup on hand. <laughs> done the lemon honey sooner, okay, so maybe. Um, had more fresh fruits on hand. Um, we didn't have any aspirin, so we had to go get aspirin. Um, my doctor said that even with pregnancy that I'm allowed to take all over-the-counter medications, which I wasn't like really aware of. So, um, you know, that made me feel better about there were just this week, like there were a couple of nights where I took Benadryl as well, just because, so <coughs> and not two, just one. So you could sleep. Yeah. I was kind of took like a half dose. Kind of weigh the, weigh the, like not sleeping through the night and having that impact you and baby or well the, the nasal drip was right. going in the back and like like tickling right. my throat yeah, you know where it's just I mean. so like you couldn't ugh. sleep if yeah. that's the case so it just helped you yeah so you know oh um sanitizing wipes so i would like um we had you know you change out the thermometer the ear thermometer like cap or whatever we we'll use the ear but i also right. use sanitizing wipes to like because you know we were all swapping germs Mm -hmm. Um, and then having a good stash of COVID tests, you know, like we, we were fortunate that Taimi's workplace dropped off some so that, you know, we could make sure that he wasn't going to work positive. Um, and then it just helped us, you know, we had a bunch, uh, stashed as well from the government, those free tests that you can still get, I'll link it for you guys. Um, you know, so we, once someone was positive, then we stopped testing them. So Vi had one test, and then yeah. Jackson had like three. Just to and mark that. Then I had like eight. <laughs> and then we wanted to know kind of how we were doing before we, you know, got together again with people. Yeah, my birthday, my 40th birthday was this past weekend. And um, the kids and I are all negative, and Kaimi still had a faint line. Um, we had already planned for this event, if you will, this gathering to be outdoors and COVID safe. Um, and so, you know, I think a big part of everybody navigating through the coronavirus is also the communication aspect of it mm -hmm. and just being really open and honest with people. And so, you know, I allowed everyone, half of my best friends had already had COVID, half had not. And, you know, it was just like being very open and clear with them. Like, hey, if you guys still want to come and camp, mm -hmm. great. Um, if not, no worries. I absolutely understand. You know, here's exactly what's happening with us. You tell us, do you want Kaimi to mask? Is distancing enough? You know, mm -hmm. and just kind of navigated it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it, we got rained out anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cut short anyway. Yeah. Everyone weighs their own kind of risk. comfort and their risk. Comfort, and, yeah. Yeah. But it is kind of an interesting thing to navigate mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. Supplements. Well, we were just taking our usual vitamins, but then we have that zinc. Zinc and elderberry gummy. gummy. Zinc and elderberry gummy that all four of us would take mm -hmm. on a regular. I was actually taking like two a day, one in the morning, one at night. Yeah, and just then there's also just the extra. regular zinc. And then I was taking my normal supplements, um, just making sure of that because I'm not always good about it. So I was being yeah. trying to be more diligent about yeah, that. Taking your vitamins and hydrating. I mean, those. those I was are, doing manuka honey. I a did a little bit every I, day. I think I was maybe every. Kind of as I felt it, I was doing the Manuka. Honey. It's a monofloral honey that's right. only found in New Zealand. They use it in hospitals because it's literally medical grade. Um, and so, so, why not? Yeah, <laughs> Can't did hurt. that. I also usually do like local honey because they say that um, mm. the honey from your area has like right. antibodies in it, you know, right. to help immune boost your immunity. So I continue to do that. Yeah. Um, lemon and honey. Making sure we're hydrated. And then you were eating. you had the uh, the aromatherapy. We did some of that. Mm -hmm. The um, eucalyptus diffuser. You know what I did a little bit of was when the kids were younger, we would do this a lot because kids get sick all the time. Is when you're in the shower, you go like this. Oh yeah. You like hit your right <clears throat> just to loosen the to blend. loosen up the mucus yeah. and the flan. And so whenever I would take a hot shower, oh good, I would like. I didn't even think of that. 
I would like do this. And then I had breathe, the doTERRA uh-huh. breathe. And I would put it like on my throat and on my chest mm-hmm. and on my um, I did a um, feet. coconut oil with lemon and thyme, I think. I put a blend and I was massaging it on my throat before going to bed. Yeah. And then elevating, like, just you know, so elevated, elevated the kids. I elevated, you yeah. elevated. Yeah. Um, so those are probably the And then just trying to rest. I mean, rest is so important, for, like, always, but obviously, especially, which was hard. I watched, hard. like, 20 Netflix series. <laughs> I, probably, <laughs> I probably took in a little more than usual, for sure. <laughs> Some uh, just trash TV. Um, an interesting part of it was contact tracing because I feel a responsibility to contact mm. trace, even though nobody else is doing it anymore and it's not required by law anymore. And it was interesting to reach out to, you know, um, the potential areas that where maybe transmission occurred and also where Vi may have been around others right. that she could have potentially impacted mm. So I reached out to the school and the event that we were at, and it was interesting to kind of get a response that was like, oh, well, we don't know of anybody who has COVID, right. <laughs> you know? And we're like, okay, we're like the the most careful people that we know, you know, like what, we what, distance, yeah. we wear masks, N95, not just masks, but N95s everywhere. So Vipuna earlier in the week could not have gotten it from anywhere but school. And then if it was within the, 48 hour window there was just one day that we were at the event on friday and you know so it was one or the other or who knows yeah it could have been during a masked it's just more to provide awareness to those folks like hey you know you might want to check right and that's why i reached out to them you know i'm like like let people know so that if they were exposed or if the transmission happened here or there at least have a heads up right exactly that like if a symptom develops like test right away you know <clears throat> and I think for me the hardest part was the isolation yeah like I really missed the kids yeah well and you just kind of get yeah kind of in a funk you know well and the uncertainty that you're laying there and you're like okay am I gonna get better because I know of people who like yeah. deal well, with long even me I I was like feeling great and then like I started to decline a little bit and I'm not like a hundred percent, but I feel definitely like I'm not in a position where I'm going to, I'm going to get worse, but there's that little bit of uncertainty because I've heard it from people where it's like, well, you've had friends you that get, died. So. Yeah. I had a cousin and others, but you know, it, it, it all affects different people differently, whether it's random or their prior health or just how much of a viral load they got or whatever circumstances so we're just so lucky and that was something that our doctors mentioned was like because we did mask everywhere we went yeah that um that can play a factor in how much of it of a viral load was initially transmitted to our first host and then you know to each other and then also masking around the house yeah to reduce you know, that if, you, that if we do get it, which we did, mm-hmm. that that can play a role in how much you like take in and how much then kind of, you And know. of course, especially with the concern for the, right. the baby and the pregnancy, um, Vi's doctor, you know, was like, just keep masking. We're like, we we're used to masking. You know, it, it's sounds, totally fine. It, so, it sounds kind of like, ah, why bother? <clears throat> but yeah. I, I, you know, can't know for sure, but we can't know for sure, but, but if the doctors say it and science says it, and you know, honestly, since we worth, shared it's the... It's worth wearing the masks, even though we're all just indoors getting it. Yeah. I, it maybe played a role in the severity or lack of that well, we all we, experienced. Well, um, since we first shared that we got COVID, um, I've had so many people reach out to me to share mm-hmm. their stories. And, you know, it's, it's just interesting how, like, the symptoms are more you know heightened for people that are reaching out to me that you know have kind of been Mm -hmm. like seeing people and Mm. you know i mean the masks aren't you you don't need to wear masks like that's it's not mandated you know um and that's definitely what we've been seeing um you know here on maui i hear that on the big island it's a little more um 
And it is weird how my psyche has changed a little mm. about COVID. You know, like we, Vi and I went to Lanai for a passport appointment. <laughs> We're like, okay, well, we've got good immunity now. Let's see if, you know, now's the time right. to, to make, yep. do our travel and, um, <clears throat> you know, see my parents and everything. But, um, yeah, you know, like we didn't mask in the ferry and how comfortable I felt yep. doing that. You know, then we got on shuttle and I was like, we're going to wear our masks. Sure. <laughs> and and we well, were negative. You also, so. you don't want to, you're pregnant. You I, don't yeah, I don't want to get the flu. Get the flu or whatever. Or anything else. So, so, so why not? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it is interesting to kind of like, I don't go anywhere really, but thinking about going places sure. and being around people and like even yeah. my, my party, you know, feeling like so much more comfortable allowing the children. Yeah to play i mean this was like the first time right. one of my best friends her son was probably like two years he was like a baby before covid mm -hmm. and we really haven't seen them and really to see to vi yeah. two years with, later you know they're four-year-old now and they're like talking and eating together and yeah, playing and um it was just like so amazing mm -hmm. to kind of not just <coughs> allow that to happen but to really really feel like oh we're able to like connect on a, on a different level i mean you still were distancing from everybody but i got yeah. to since i was negative you know i got to kind of like really be with my friends yeah. which i haven't done in so long well this is very long <laughs> 30 minute oh <laughs> podcast or not podcast um vlog um <clears throat> but we just kind of wanted to go through you know um, all of the questions that people had and tell you how we fared. And I think we did a pretty thorough job. Okay. We'll let your throat rest. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>